how did you become this millionaire millennial in nearly five years? My financial journey really started in 2010, just right after the Great Recession. And I was actually laid off twice from two different jobs and had to move back home with my parents with no money in the bank, completely starting from scratch. And it was around this time I was looking at my parents and for the first time, a lot of the dreams that they had talked about, I realized growing up, they either didn't have them anymore or they hadn't accomplished them because they'd spent that time doing the nine to five, commuting 45 minutes to work each way. And I really started thinking about, okay, why are they still stressed about money? Why am I stressed about money? What is money? And I wrote down just a simple list of you know, the big things that I'd been taught about money. And the first one was that money is time. But I realized very quickly that money is actually infinite. You can always go out and make more money, but you can't get back your time. So in fact, time is so much more valuable. How can I save up enough money that I can essentially buy back my own time? and reach financial freedom. I developed an in-demand skill set. I taught myself how to run Google AdWords campaigns and got certified by Google all for free and ended up after applying to over 200 jobs, I got the first job that I applied to. So it was really off to the races. And I was reading a number of personal finance books during this time, but the big one that had the hugest impact was Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. And I learned the correlation between your savings rate, your percentage of your income that you're saving, and how quickly you can reach financial independence. So once I got that first job, I started saving 50% of my income right out the gate. I drove an $800 car. I lived in a $700 a month apartment in Chicago and pretty much spent all of my time trying to side hustle and develop new skills to make more money. In general, how would one achieve financial freedom? You know, what are a few things that might be holding us back? The first thing is to figure out what does financial freedom mean to you? So it means something very different to everyone. For someone, it might be, I need $5 million in the bank. And for someone else, it might be, I just want to get out of debt so I can sleep better at night. And so there's seven levels that I designed in the book of financial freedom. And the first one is simply being you know, self-sufficient. Most people in this country have still have less than $1,000 saved and live paycheck to paycheck. So finding ways to get uh, beyond that and have enough money saved so you have some options. And that's really the, the biggest first step. The reality is that you're actually in control though. And this is the thing. There's so little that we can control in life, but how much money we spend is actually one of them. And so I recommend that you focus on trying to save in those areas where you actually typically spend the most amount of money. And so everyone talks about how cut back on the latte or glass of wine or the pedicure, or the manicure or hanging out with friends and the Netflix subscription. But in reality, those are the things that often give us the most joy in our life. And so we're not, we shouldn't cut back those small things. We should cut back the things where we're spending the most money. And so moving to a three bedroom apartment and renting out the other two rooms to offset or completely cover the cost of your own rent. It's called house hacking. It's a whole, it's a whole large uh, way to reduce your biggest expense. You talk a lot about side hustles on your site. In your opinion, do you have a top five or a few that stand out? As the online economy has grown, there's massive demand for things like proofreaders. You know, something as simple as, you know, if you like reading and you're detail oriented, you know, you can make 20 to you know, $50 an hour in some cases proofreading uh, corporate content, blog content. Another one is virtual assistants. And so if you're also organized and you, you want to help someone else stay organized, being a virtual assistant for an online entrepreneur or even a corporate entrepreneur uh, is, is growing in demand. I'm seeing just massive increase in demand on millennial money for people who are interested and want to start a blog and make some money online. And it's pretty easy to start a blog and make one to $2,000 per month, uh, you know, within, within a couple of months. The best ones are where you're in control of how much money you're making and, uh, you know, obviously what you charge and when you work. And then the final piece is side hustling, doing something that you enjoy or that, you know, you could even go as far as saying something that you love makes a massive impact on how much you enjoy it and also how much money you could potentially make because the most lucrative and profitable and enjoyable side hustles 
are going to be ones they don't take really any money to start up it just takes some time to lay the foundation and start testing things and so I always like to recommend that you have a couple of different side hustles and you don't fully commit to one because part, part of the process is figuring out what you enjoy doing and what you don't enjoy doing. Most people say they have to find out working from home. In your opinion, it seems like this is kind of an optimal time in a sense to maybe experiment, try out something new that you can earn a little extra cash. Yeah, experiment, and then also I recommend spending some time on your own career development, for lack of a better term. So Americans spend more time planning for their vacations than they do trying to optimize their career. And so spending a little bit of time researching other jobs uh, in your industry, what people get paid based on glass door information, contacting recruiters that work in your industry, forming some relationships with them, to figure out whether you're getting paid your market value, which is simply what some other company would pay you for your skills. And that's what I encourage people to do now is look at your career because a lot of people I think jump to side hustles too quickly. And side hustles are valuable, but once again, you're going to be able to make more money where you're currently making a lot of money and that's in your full-time job. So making sure you're taking advantage of all your benefits, connecting with recruiters, because there might be a job in another company doing what you're doing where you can make twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just moving to a different company doing the same job. You just might not know that job exists because you're not connected to the market 